Cat is cat there? No, can't hear you. Maybe it's just an issue with like energy tonight because I came on and I was chatting up a storm and nobody could hear me. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> um, still can't hear you yet. No, it's just like it's the Schumann resonance, you know, like it's been out for like 36 hours. It's probably just affecting everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm on two cams. Let me make sure. I'm looking at your mic desktop audio make sure that your audio bars are on just the way it's yeah it's on audio bars are good cat can't uh we can't hear cat though hold on i'm just looking she's on i like my audio bar is working but you can't hear her at all this one okay same thing sound bar And you're whispering, but I'm sure they can hear you. Like, this is, like, the best mic ever. Cat, I can't hear you. I still can't hear. Just sing for a minute. You know what I mean? You're like, no, I'm sick of singing. <laughs> so go to Discord. Wait. Discord? Okay. Yes, I'm in Discord. It's fine. Now what? Okay. So let's do a single cam for just a second. Okay, because I don't know what's on my shiznit. Mm -hmm. Isn't this fun, guys? I got it. I got it. Mm, this one? Mm -hmm. Sound. Voice. Yes. Yeti? I don't see the other one. Yeti. That's it. Cat, can you say hey? Hi. Jesus, there she is. She's loud. Holy shit. Oh, oh. It's fine. How do I turn it down a little bit? Uh, uh, for you. Okay, go to uh, right click your name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mute. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I laughing? <laughs> no, she's okay now. Maybe it was just when she said hi, it was really loud. You know what I'm saying? Hi. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, let's try it. Easy on the hi. Okay, okay, you can turn it down like that, right? Try it again. Yeah. Try it again, cat. Hello. Oh, wow. That's better. They could, they could hear Woo! I know, they can hear you. I know, it's fine. Everything's fine. You know what I mean? Almost just snorted Diet Coke. It's That's fine. Okay. Are you okay? Like, I didn't, I wasn't trying to rush you. You could have come on whenever. Like, you didn't have oh, to. Oh, no. Are you up? Uh, okay, well. I am good. How was your sing? Was it a good sing? <laughs> it was a good sing. Yeah. I love the random, like last minute gigs i thrive off of that adrenaline you know what oh i'm saying god tell me uh, but it went it went really well that was my first singing gig thing um since COVID hit was it really like, I, has it been mm -hmm. that long mm -hmm. yep that has was my first really? like actually Jesus. in front of people wow. yeah there's a really beautiful outdoor venue in center harbor new hampshire which mm -hmm. is like by um the lake mm -hmm. a lake region and it's just it's so beautiful wow. and it has like this really big bandstand and there was a band it's called center harbor town band but it's straight up an orchestra wow. of like 30 people in this bandstand and um then they have like the big audience and all of that you know, see outside. i wish i wasn't so far because if you called me one night you're like hey i'm singing i'd be like i'll be there you know what i'm saying it's so fun and it's, it's just not that easy when i'm in vegas it's a little far you know what i mean no like, well pretty soon we'll both be living in vegas then we won't have to worry about it <sighs> yeah but this summer's been hot um, i'm not, not even kidding like it's been rough man this summer well actually that's a lie we've gotten monsoons i don't know why i'm complaining i just don't like the summers well, in vegas period well, when you get water, like, I mean, when I don't know you how get much. water. When you get water, there's, like, bad humidity over here. Yeah, and we've had some humidity. Deep. Yeah, we, we've had humidity this year, which is strange. It doesn't usually happen in Vegas. I don't really know what that's about other than the monsoon rains, but they've had it really bad in Arizona, too. They've had, like, massive floods going on down there, so. 
Just That's saying. That's crazy. I know. Too well, much. It floods here too. It floods. It always floods. It's because you're in the, in the desert. You know what I mean? Like, and the it rainstorms the hit pressure. and it turns into like rock slides and it's just like it's part of the area. You know what I'm saying? It's true. So it's true. what? Else? I've missed being live. I know. I feel weird because I'm like, and like everyone's probably like, yeah, she clearly doesn't remember what she's doing. She can't even hit the fucking microphone, right? You know what I'm saying? It's fine. Okay, we're <laughs> getting back into the swing of things, guys. It's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. We're gonna back into it. I'm I'm excited for your stream with Elfie next yeah. week. That's gonna be an awesome topic. Yeah, today's very like laid back, chill, which I feel like people love this one anyways more than anything because. We're so chill. Oh, someone asked if you have footage of you singing and your YouTube channel. Um, I don't know. I think I'm, I think I actually might have privated those videos. Oh, really? Um, you were like, you can't see them. But I'll put them back up. I'll put them back up if Wait, you want to see them. Where are you? You know? Hello? Oh. Hello? I was just delivered magic potion wine. Ooh. Oh. Did you forget? I need magic. Hang on. Do you want me to put? Do you want me let to leave screen get, for a second? Let me get magic potion vodka. <laughs> well, I need I need magic potion wine delivered to me, please, immediately. Work on the wine. Oh my gosh! I'm in dead. the fridge, please. Okay, so we'll just wait for a minute for the wine. So if you don't have okay. wine, go get some wine because we have something to we'll cheers to. Yes, everybody, because I want everyone in on this. So. You have uh, as long as until Kat gets her wine to, to get some. Which might take 20 minutes, no, I'm just kidding. No. Today has been, like, so delayed. Thank you, Crystal, for being flexible. Oh, today has always. been. You know what? This last eight months has been a rough time. But you know what? I think we're, I think we're almost done with all of it. You know what I mean? So it'll be fun to kind of chat about everything that we've been doing. That's why I'm like, go get some wine. Just get, get some wine. Even if it has tea in it. I have a glass. I have a glass. <laughs> the glass it's and it's empty. empty. So it is co it's coming. Yeah, it's I coming. have. Okay, so that's fine. We'll wait. So I have my bubbly here. I'm having a Moscato, Italian Moscato for this evening. Ooh, I love so, it. Yeah, this it's not like booze and reviews, but it, I mean, kind of. We're going to do a it review, is. but it's like, it's, it's yeah, casually informal booze and reviews, chill, hang out. That's fun, though. Yeah, it is. It'll be water for me. Well, that's fine. Water's fine. You know what I mean? Like, pretend like it's water. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. But we'll, it... We're having a huge cheers in a minute. Yeah, put your pinky we, up. We will be. When in doubt, pinky out. <sighs> That's how I'm feeling. That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, I want to talk about the last eight months, too. We'll, we'll just kind of chat for a second until your wine gets delivered. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yep. And um, <laughs> so, wouldn't that be That's what we need to open is a wine delivery business. We I'm do. sure there, I'm sure that exists, like, somewhere, but, like... Yeah, definitely for just sure. hire like a butler in your house to just bring it to you you know what i mean Gosh, that would be incredible <laughs> that would be i just need someone man, like that. a man servant oh my god oh my god, god <laughs> jesus lord um the topic I tonight mean, a lot we're kind of tonight's a casual chat which i feel like people like these when when cat and i do casual hangouts mm -hmm. because we're kind of like all over the place and um we're gonna talk about um, the last eight months, what we've been doing for the last eight months, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to be cheering, cheersing, cheersing? Is that, that's not, that's not cheersing. a word. It is now. Cheersing. Thing. Cheering to, um, an accomplishment that we have, a few accomplishments that we have. Um, we're going to be chatting about Destination Fear. We're going to be chatting about Ghost Adventures episode. We're just going to kind of like do a couple little, little hangout chats and like, I don't know. There's some cool stuff that we're going to talk about. It's, it's very happy stuff. Like, I know the biggest question people have um, had is, like, where the hell have you been? And, um, you know, we were, <laughs> I don't know. That's the answer. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know where I've been. Um, Kat got a whole damn bottle delivered. Like, literally, I have a glass. You got a whole bottle. What are you having? And it's cold. Um, it's called Rock Falls. Yeah. Um, Cabernet. Okay, 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 mine's ready. Mine's mine's a Italian Moscato. It's delicious. You know what I'm saying? Wine for ASMR. Hopefully everybody has that. Oh, yeah, do it. Quiet. Shh, listen. Ooh, it's, it's too late. Now. It's too late. Damn I'm it. I'm going to drink the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> ASMR Thank wine you. bottle. Oh, my God. I'm dead. And a paper towel because I am accident prone. So <laughs> Your butler Great. was prepared. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, my God. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm just saying. It's All fine. Right. How's Lily? Is she in there? <laughs> 
She's sleeping. Aww. I don't know if you can see. You can see my Windex bottle. I came unprepared today. I'm That's sorry. Fine. Is she? Oh, um, she's her tank. She's, she's in the blue. See that blue? Yeah. That's her blanket. Oh, does she sleep That's with the blanket? That's her sleeping. So yeah. Cat has a bearded dragon, and it's my niece. So don't talk shit about my niece because it will. <laughs> Lily. Me. She knows yep. my voice on the phone, guys. Yeah. Like, I great. call and she'll run towards the phone. I love her. So, yeah, that's She's nice. so cute. So, wine. <laughs> wine. We are cheering. Yes. We are cheering to some major accomplishments this evening. So, yes. the first major thing that we want to talk about is Ghost Girl Diaries has mm -hmm. won their first official film festival awards. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Okay, wait. Oh, cheers. Sorry. Wine. Okay, cheers. 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 Yep. Okay. Um, ooh, that's mm. good Moscato. Mm -hmm. Holler, okay. Oh my god, that's really good wine. Damn. Um, basically, what's happening is, um, we had submitted to a ton of film festivals in 2020 when the pilot was completed, but, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately because of COVID, mass majority of the, um, the film festivals were shut down because they weren't yeah. going to be able to, um, normally, okay, so what a film festival is, is when you're a new filmmaker, you uh, submit your, um, you know, your creative arts and your film, whatever it is, documentary, to a festival, and then if it's accepted out of, you know, hundreds or maybe even thousands of entries, you go to the film festival. Um, they showcase it. They have people sit in the audience and watch it. Most of the time, people in the audience of the film festival are executives, uh, producers, production companies, sometimes even networks attend, and that's why um, they had to cancel it in 2020 because of COVID. Because um, obviously social distancing was a thing, masks mandates were a thing, and um, you know, a lot of executives weren't willing to sort of uh, risk their lives um, due to the illness. So most of the film festivals either got shut down or they got turned into uh, virtual um, festivals. So we were accepted into many festivals. However, many of them... Um, well, all of them either went virtual or basically, like, they tried to do this thing where they helped the filmmakers by submitting your films to, like, executive producers or people that, like, might be interested in it. And I'm going to be honest, like, I know that, you know, it was a rare occasion because it was a pandemic, but it really didn't do us any good when they were just sending yeah. it out. We didn't really get anywhere with that. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the festivals, well, a couple of the festivals, we actually ended up getting in the finals. Um, so they sort of vote and do this stuff with film festivals. And we got um, awarded a couple of awards. We have to cheers again. Cheers, yay, cheers. So mm -hmm. here are the awards that we won. We won Best Documentary. We won Best Documentary Ready for a Television Series. We won Best um, Project Ready to be Sold and Marketed, Best Marketing Project. And the last thing that we won was executive producers to watch out for. And it was for Crystal Leandra. <clears throat> I was choking on wine right when you said that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, guzzling it. You're like, oh. Woo! Yeah, cheers. <laughs> yeah, no, cheers. cheers to that, boo. You freaking worked hard for that one. Mm -hmm. Cheers, guys. It was uh, mm -hmm. not an easy task. I know that... I have shared my story um, with Kat on, on a podcast before on how difficult the pilot was for us to film. I had a lot of uh, obstacles that were thrown at my way. My mom was sick. My dog had passed away right when we were filming. Um, and, you know, I, for, for a mediocre job, I think I did pretty good considering we got so many film festival awards. What do you think, Kat? It's amazing. You worked your butt off, girl. Yeah. So imagine if, if I'm not having all that stress, what I can pull off true imagine it's, it i'm imagining <laughs> so um, so the good so what happens when this happens right so like you know it's so funny because like i have hate i have i have enemies i have haters i don't care you know like you're gonna always have enemies and haters but yeah. so many people um so many people you know have said oh crystal's full of shit like she's been saying she's gonna do this and she hasn't done it for like literally years. And it's like, it just doesn't happen overnight. And, and there's ways you have to go about things. Negotiations fall through. Um, just because it didn't oh. happen when people wanted it to doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And um, it, it went beautifully. And so what happens after a film festival submission, and especially if you win submissions, 
essentially you want to win, right? Like you want to win. That's the whole point. Like they usually put you in different categories and then um, they have like a chair that like actually votes on all of the um, like different categories and you want to win. And so what happens if you win is producers, production companies just come knocking on your door and I didn't have to do anything. Honestly, I didn't have to do anything for people to start um, noticing me because you know, like I like to say that the film um, industry is a big little community because like it is big, but really when you look at it, it's not that many people involved. And if you win a film festival or if people start recognizing your work, um, word does start to travel like fast. Don't you think so, Kat? I mean, I agree. And, you know, networking is the biggest thing mm -hmm. when it comes to the experiences. And that's when it becomes a big little spot. You it becomes know, especially a thing. Yeah, it does. It does, especially depending on what you work with, or at least what I have noticed and observed is, you know, you're either in feature or reality, or you, you're, you're in your specific genre always, mm -hmm. you know? Not that you can't cross over, but, you know, when you end up networking with those people within those areas of film, you're going to bump into them a lot, mm -hmm. you know? So having these opportunities for film festivals, especially during the pandemic, the panini, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> panini. Um, you know, it was a really, it was a really wonderful opportunity for it to even be a virtual experience. Mm -hmm. um, kind of just go with the times instead of just canceling it like everybody else did. Mm -hmm. It's true. And the results took longer, but I mean, so what? You know, what's waiting a little bit longer? Yeah, I had my first virtual pitches in 2020. I've never done that before. I'm, I'm the kind of person that Peter said that he um, got a major contract as a writer. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. I understand how hard it is in this industry. That's amazing. Cheers to you as well. Cheers. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I had to do, uh, I had to do what was called virtual pitches, which is basically where you have, um, executive producers, production companies that want to, uh, hear about your project. You have to do an actual pitch to them. And I had to pitch them and, um, you know, some of them will go somewhere, some of them won't and that's okay. And, um, I mean, in the long run, um, it doesn't matter because yeah. you know that it's, it's giving you practice. And I feel like as long as you, even if you keep continuing to fail, like you can't look at it as a failure. You have to look at it as like, I'm becoming better with these failures. You know what I mean? Like I, I heard a quote the other day. I told Kat about it. It was 99% of the doors that you try to open will not open. And you're waiting for that 1%. And it depends how many times you're willing to get back up and continue to try. And a lot of people have, uh, you know, assumed I would fail. A lot of people wanted me to fail. A lot of people didn't believe me. That includes family members as well. Like sometimes you get people that are like, you think would be like your number one fans that are not there for you either. And um, it's so funny because the irony is <laughs> when you do finally make something of yourself, suddenly they're like, oh my God, that's my niece. Or like, that's my, that's my granddaughter. You know what I mean? Like, or that's my like cousin. And you're like, dude, yep. you didn't give a shit like this whole time. And now you're going to brag about me because I actually did something, you know, like made something, like did what I said I was going to do. So it is, but, um, long story short is, um, in January. So essentially I sort of continued to pitch all of 2020. I had some good, um, openings, some openings that weren't really going anywhere. That's sort of just the name of the game, but uh, endlessly, no matter what my, my name was still being sort of shared. And, um, I was getting people say like, well, we're not really interested, but I know somebody else that would be. And so that's how, it, that's how it starts. That's how the network starts. And like, I remember telling Kat, I think it was around this time last year, didn't I tell you? I was like, we're going to have, like, major progress by, like, the new year. Like, I just know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so January rolls around, and um, I'm not going to really say the company or anything like that. I'm going to keep um, things private. But I, I got uh, my information or, like, the project and, like, the YouTube channel was forwarded to... Um, one of the biggest major production companies um, I've ever spoke with and this production company specializes in um, unscripted TV and documentary TV and they came across my YouTube channel and they came across the podcast they found the book um, everything that I've done and on top of that not even realizing I had ha um, the film festival and obviously the awards behind me and they were blown away um, by what I had created. And 
that is what you have to find is you have to find that right fit like you can talk to a hundred production companies and it doesn't matter it may not be the right fit and I feel like with Ghost Girl Diaries my message has always been so much more than just paranormal like I love paranormal like that's life you know but um, it's so much more than that it's like spreading awareness of women in film and spreading awareness of women in paranormal and uh, you know, I, I learned a lot in 2020 while I was negotiating with production companies because a lot of production companies would tell me stuff like, well, you're not going to get it signed because paranormal is like, you know, Zach Bagan's greasy hair and biceps. And like, you know, why yeah. would women want to be involved with um, ghost hunting and like, you know, going into like abandoned buildings? And like, you're girly. Why would you want to, you know, you're girly and you wear makeup. Like, you don't fit the, like, you don't fit it, you know, like t-shirt and jeans girl fits it and like that's when I would have producers literally tell me to my face like just join like OF like make OF like make OF content and like you'll make money that way and I'm like that's not that's not what I want to do you know like not there's hate to anybody that's doing that um so I got I was getting frustrated but I just knew I had to keep going and I had to be persistent and I found a company in January well a company found me is how I should word it And um, they not only believed in Ghost Girl Diaries and what I was trying to create, obviously blown away by Kat, blown away that I have freaking Elfie from Paranormal State (laughs) says enough. Like, I don't even, I feel like I just, that's enough said. You know what I mean? Like, Elfie has such a reputation of just being like one of the like OG badass girls in film from Paranormal State. And Mm -hmm. for her to want to work with me on, like, a permanent basis and, like, do the thing. And, like, (laughs) she also, like, that says enough. You know what I mean? Like, it just says enough. Um, Elfie's amazing. Elfie's Elfie's badass. And so Mm -hmm. having her behind me, they were like, "Um, wow, like, you have this message. And, like, women in film and women in paranormal. And when I started doing the pitch, they were like, wow, you're right why isn't there girls in paranormal like what's what what has taken so long why is this what what is going on um nobody really you know no one knew and so they started doing like their own research behind it and they realized the production company that i'm i'm bonded with i guess i could say um and they're like oh my god you're right it's always guys yeah always guys it's always guys and they were like don't realize it because it's so normal it's like, you're right. It shouldn't be normal. You're right. And or like it's not, you know, like I love, you know, Chris Williams obviously from Ghost Hunters, but and Amy Bruni too, but they're both very girl next doorish. They're not girly. They don't have like certain aspects. You're a singer, like that's like super feminine. I'm into like fashion makeup that's feminine. Like you know, mm-hmm. Elfie stands for her own thing too, and it's like there's not there hasn't been any space for that either. Um yeah. and so they were like, Holy crap, like this is this is needed. Like this is absolutely needed. And um, we have now sold Ghost Girl Diaries to a major production company. Cheers again. Cheers again. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Ah, Cheers again. Um, I'm going to need another glass. (laughs) You're like, like, after this day, I'm just throwing it back. Um, So, yeah, I'm not really saying who we're with. I'm not really under NDA with it. um, But I don't, uh, I, I respect NDAs. We, we have one NDA, um, and it's just, um, NDAs protect both parties, you know, like, some people get scared of NDAs. How do you feel about NDAs? I mean, they're there to, you're, like what you said, to protect both parties, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, you, that's it, period. Mm-hmm. You know, there's really nothing to be nervous about or afraid of, mm-hmm. you know, it's pretty standard where you can protect yourself and whoever else can protect them. And that's it. When you work with someone really closely for a long time, like you and I know a lot about each other. Mm-hmm. And I, NDAs protect when you've known someone for a very long time, you share intimate things that happen in your day-to-day life. And mm-hmm. when people get angry, if something yeah. happens, they want to use your trauma against you. And yeah. that's why an NDA is there to protect you from private things that you've shared with each other. So It's true. And even on a spiritual sense, too... You can even think of it as like, you know, the NDAs are there for a specific manifestation mm-hmm. and you want to protect that manifestation at all costs. That's true. As well, mm-hmm. you know, um, 
and sometimes that comes from just being quiet about it yep. you know what i'm saying and mm-hmm. just doing this, this stuff behind the scenes and then bam so that's true yeah so um the company's amazing the production mm-hmm. company the producers um I've never ever been in contact and, and been signed to a company who believes in me so much and wanted to push my project so hard and um, adore me and believe in my future as an executive producer and as a director. Like they have huge plans for me. Um, you know, eventually they'd like to, to move me into movies, like maybe horror movies or even like documentary film. And um, they just, they have a lot of plans for me. They see my potential. And I think it was the first time in, you know, I've been on YouTube as a YouTuber for 10 years. And I think it was the first time in 10 years that I stopped with my um, imposter syndrome. I've had imposter syndrome for a really long time. Like, Kat yells at me still about it. Like, she's like, Crystal, you have millions of views on YouTube. And I'm like, yeah, but I could have done better. I could have done better. And she's like, shut the fuck up. Uh, (laughs) To want to strive for something bigger than what you might have already built, you know? But... You know, you guys, Crystal's been on this journey. She was solo on this journey for quite some time. You know, it's only been like, what, four four years, four or five years that you've had like an active crew, Mm -hmm. like, you know, to this scale. Mm -hmm. And when you have a production company or somebody that heavily believes in your dream and the things that you do that Crystal's pulled off, there's such an incredible sense of validation that comes with that because when you're doing it on your own, you're stuck in your head. Mm -hmm. It's like anybody, you know, there's going to be some forms of insecurity and that doesn't mean that that insecurity is coming from not a good product. That just means that, you know, you're here to make big change and like your dreams are actually happening. So when you have somebody on your path and people on your path that genuinely like vibrate at the same frequency as you and that believe heavily in your dream, um, that's just like such an incredibly validating experience. And um, that's why I just, I get goosebumps every time Crystal talks about it, like all of the things that, you know, she has coming towards her because it is so, she is so worthy, so worthy. She's worked her butt off and been through hell and back. And uh, it's just so exciting to see your friends and people that you care about, like genuinely succeed in life as well. It's just, I also want you guys to succeed though you know like I think that's what something people don't realize behind the scenes and you know because you've been in negotiations with me is like some people like oh you said you were in negotiations for four months and then what happened it fell through yeah 99% of them will fall through they're they're supposed to fall through like the the right one you're supposed to wait for the right one and the reason it it falls through people like oh because like it's not good enough for crystal or whatever no it's not good enough for my crew it's not good enough for everybody involved it's that and like you know, Crystal's never been one to settle either, you know? Like, we all want to strive for really big things, and that's something that she's also been putting out there as well that's best for everybody, you know, family-oriented, like, loving her crew, and, like, she really does do that, you know? And it's just such, um, it's such an incredible experience. And, like, when things like that happen, when it comes to negotiations and things falling through, like, starting over isn't easy for anybody no matter how long you've been in something you know it's gonna be hard always but it's the persistence and and having a different perspective of okay what did i learn from this experience or what do what do i what do i not need to take with me to Mm -hmm. this next experience you know and when you change that perspective to more, more like a learning experience i feel like it it's changed like the energy of that experience has changed from a oh my gosh this thing fell through to wow look what can happen now you know like it's an it's an open book mm-hmm. so pretty well, exciting I think if you honestly. look back to sometimes when you're involved in it at that moment and and like a deal falls through a negotiation falls through it's um it seems like the end of the world and yeah you don't know how you're going to pick yourself up and keep going. And you're like, oh my God, I think that was like, that's it. That's all I've got. But like the universe always sort of opens different doors and like shows you the path of the way through. And then you're able to just sit down and be like, oh my God, like the universe provided, I didn't even have to do anything. And this particular like connection that I'm talking about, who we're selling, well, who I've sold GGD to, um, is, is it like, I've never had a connection like this before. And, um, it was worth the wait. And then you sort of look back 
and look at all the other like doors that were slammed in your face and you understand why they were slammed in your face because they weren't good enough and they weren't the deal that you were waiting for and they weren't what your crew needed like I always preach like it's not just about my success like I want everyone to succeed I want everyone to have financial abundance I want everyone to be financially free I want us not to worry about paying bills anymore I want to travel the world with my friends and go to scary places and um, you know, get see spooky shit and like, you know, film it and <laughs> yep. like, make it cool. Yep. I want it to look good on film. And like, I'm, I'm driven. And I know that um, this path isn't for everybody. Yeah. This path it's isn't hard. for everybody. Um, it's a lot of patience. And I've lost a lot of crew along the way. Rightfully so. You know, like, it, it does seem daunting when you're not in the driver's seat, because you're like, this person's like, just trying and nothing's working. And and unfortunately that's film like you have to wait for your like big break and yeah. even with all my experience in the past of being on set I still didn't have a big break like no one was still willing to sign me and give me um, the freedom I wanted to be able to direct it and produce it the way I wanted to and that literally meant waiting 10 years and here we are it's literally been a 10 year journey I was on set filming for paranormal challenge my very first film set, which triggered this whole thing, July of 2011, so literally 10 years ago last month. Is that crazy? Wow. And my premiere is next month. So the very first time I premiered on television, like on cable TV, was September of 2011. So next month's another really big milestone. So um, it's just proof that with perseverance and even with a really difficult path, like when you have really big dreams like this, it's not going to happen overnight. Kat, you know that. You've been a singer for years. Your parents were famous opera singers in Europe. True. Like, you get you get it. Like, it just doesn't no. happen. No, it does not happen overnight. <laughs> it does not, you know? You have to really put your time and effort into your craft and in, into anything that you want to do and succeed at. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be film. It doesn't have to be music. It could be anything. And when you give your 110%, you not only regain that, you know, self-love and appreciation for yourself, but the universe sees that as well mm -hmm. and gifts it in so many unique ways that you didn't think doors would open in. Mm -hmm. And they do. And you're like, what do I do? Like, it, what what is happening right now? And it's just mm -hmm. exciting. Well, yeah, that's how this um, deal came about was like, I wouldn't, I didn't go looking for it. They came looking for me. How crazy is yeah. that, guys? 10 years That's later, awesome. I didn't, I, I've been running it into the ground, promoting it, pushing it towards producers for 10 years. And then all of a sudden, one day, they just come knocking on my door out of nowhere. And that happens to be it. So it's just proof that it's almost like you do have to like prove yourself to the universe. It's all about energy manipulation of like, is she still doing it? She still wants it. Okay, we're going to give it to her yeah. now. She's done it long enough that we're going to give it to her now. Yeah. Um, we've talked about level ups though and like ascension and like being on your spiritual path and when you reach like a new tier and like you've learned a lesson the universe is going to throw that lesson at you like 10 more times before you go and learn your next one mm -hmm. and it's because it's practice of instilling that lesson that you have learned and let's see how far you can take it type mm -hmm. of thing so um when you learn to have that different perspective of something outside of yourself um and really push yourself to you know, follow through with some of those boundaries you've instilled or, you know, in anything that you do, um, it really turns into a, a great experience. And all around, it does affect career and it affects your dreams and things of that nature because mm -hmm. you want to be in alignment. Mm -hmm. And divine timing is real too, but everything has to come together at the right time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always say like, there's never any really right or wrong choice in life because no matter what, you'll always come back around. It's just a, you know, win. You know, whenever you decide to make that choice. Well, I think so. the universe moves the wrong people out of the way, too. That can be, like, you know, staff or even producers, production companies, networks that you um, try to negotiate with. Like, if it's not right, the door's not going to open, period. There's nothing you can yeah. do about it. You can't force things to work. Um, mm -hmm. And that's okay, because at the end of the day, you don't want the wrong people involved on any aspect like you want all the right people involved like if you've been patient enough to fight it out this long and wait it out this long like wait for the right things and the people to fall in place um true. now true. the next phase is basically we have to figure out where we're going um network wise and i i won't be able to talk about anything after that um 
Yeah. It's it's sort of that and patience. Um, is it going to happen next week, next month? No, Mm-mm, it's not. The next phase is going to take time too. We have to decide where home's going to feel like and if if that home is the right place to be. Um, and I don't know how long that's going to take. Oftentimes, you'll put in a bid from like one network, especially when you're dealing with TV or, or um, digital. And then other like networks will come in and put other um, other bids in on it. You just don't know how it's going to unfold. It could take um, it could take two months, it could take six months, it could take eight months. Nobody really knows. So it's just yeah. if you're patient, it'll happen, and you just have to wait it out. And that's sort of where we're at. Um, yeah. There was something else that I was going to add too. Now I can't remember what it was. Oh, let's talk about um, your experience <laughs> with negotiations. <laughs> stressful and I wasn't even in the damn meetings okay (laughs) all right is all I'm gonna say about that being an empath is hard it is hard we talked about this Um, briefly on Instagram the other day like I just I think this is a great place to start I just so I could want you to take off which is I had a really tough meeting um weeks ago and it didn't go well and um I was fine I wasn't crying or anything I was just sitting in my bedroom in the dark (laughs) and I was like staring at the ceiling at cat calls and she's like Cat started crying, and you weren't even I was involved. Falling. Yeah, yeah. I don't cry often either, y'all. I only cry when I get like really mad. But this was like an actual sad cry. <laughs> like I was genuinely invested. I was invested and sad. I was really sad. And it's more yeah, of a, that was a sense of just how intense. Like, like people it's an think intense process. Yeah, people think negotiations are just like. I would say minimum negotiations go on for four months. Maximum, I've had the longest was a year. The next longest I had was eight months. That's eight months of your life. That's an entire year that's flown by. You know what I mean? Like, and then people are like, well, if that negotiating go through, find another one. It's like, yeah, I only have four months left of this month. Or four months left of this year. You know what I mean? So, like, what's your experience with it now that, like, I mean, that was scary. It's scary. Trauma. The trauma. (laughs) Um... (laughs) But, you know, well, you know what, like, I I love learning new things. And I think observing and like hearing people's experiences is um, that's like the best thing you could do to take it all in. You know, experience is one thing like hands on deck. But all I'm going to say is I'm glad I'm not in on those meetings because, wow, that takes a type of person, a strong type of person to be able to deal with that. Um, That is not me. (laughs) Yeah, you and Elfie both um, kind of cornered me. We were all on the phone one day, and I, because I was giving you guys updates, and you both looked at me and said, I don't want your job, Crystal. No, we do not want job of EP, okay? No, we're good. We yeah, I don't want to glamorize that in any way, because, like, you know, at the end of the day, if anybody does anything wrong, or if something needs to be changed, or if Kat screws up or Elfie screws up, they're not the ones that are in trouble. It's me. So the EP is, like, mm-hmm. the main, like... Well, especially I'm in hands-on EP. There's different types of EPs. There's some EPs that just fund it from afar. Like, they'll just, like, put in, you know, a million or two million or whatever. But I'm, like, a hands-on, like, doing this production. Like, I, you could literally categorize me as, like, a producer, director, and an EP all in one. And so everything falls on me. And I'm also yeah. the one negotiating it. Thank God I can... There was one day I was on call for these meetings. Like, literally, you're on call for 24 hours a day. I'm not even kidding you. Like, it's not even a joke. It's- it's wild Mm -hmm. it's wild you have to remember that um you're asking companies for millions of dollars and like yeah like my season one has like a cap of like a couple million dollars because like you're you're talking about paying people like camera tech cinematography you're talking about the cost of equipment all you know post-production but you're not thinking about the cost of advertisements so maybe mm-hmm. billboard advertisements, maybe television advertisements, buying those slots. So when you talk about that, like promoting, you know, once the season is done, you are like literally asking for like five to $15 million from people. So when you're on that much money that you're, you're asking from executives, they, you're on call 24 seven. Like they don't care if it's the middle of the night and they want to call you and negotiate. Like you're, if you're asking for this money, like you're going to be there when they're ready. There was one day I was so tired that I was literally taking a nap. I called Kat and told her. I was taking a nap, (laughs) and I was, like, totally asleep. Like, it was midday. I just needed, like, a day. And I got a call from an executive for a negotiation, and I was asleep. Mm -hmm. And my bedroom was dark. I have, like, those, like, blackout curtains. So, I mean, it was, like, black in my bedroom. And I sat up on my phone, 
And I was like, yes, this is Crystal Leander. I was like, you couldn't even tell. I had just been like work. totally out. In work. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, people that don't understand negotiations, what do, what would you say to them on that? I mean, do you think it's a fast process? Do you think it should be a fast process? Oh, it's freaking ugly. All right. If we're just going to get real raw, it's ugly. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, again, I'm just, I'm glad I'm not crystal sure. Um, really glad is the I'm negotiation not back and forth for every little detail. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the every worst, every thing. little detail, like the way like, you fart you don't even think about. is in the contract. Yeah. Like the way, the position that you fart is in the contract. And yeah, it, don't be left leaner. Yeah. Don't be, don't be left leaner. Okay. No. Don't be a left leaner. <laughs> But yeah, every little thing. Right. And the worst part is you can go like eight months into a contract of negotiation and they'll drop you and it's over. Yeah, they don't care. And that's it's it. It's fine. Like it's done, you know, and that's hard to come back from. That's the part of the job where people can easily say, I'm done. That's it. I'm done. That was a lot of time. And you can't. You just can't. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's, it's what Crystal said before. Like... 99% of the doors are going to be shut in your face or just not open at all. Mm -hmm. But it's not about how many doors you can open. It's how many times you get back up to open that one door that will give you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that perseverance radiates through networking systems, through people in the industry. And that is how you become not only a fearless leader in whatever mission you're trying to accomplish, but also a successful EP, a successful just individual in general, um, because that speaks volumes. Really and out does. of all of the negotiations I've had over the years, do you know how many women have been in on as an EP besides me? One. One? one. Yeah. I've had one. 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 Yeah. And so... How do you think well, it is right. about that, yeah. going into a room, or not a room, like on the phone, even a Zoom meeting? How do you think it is for me as a female going into a room full of millionaires that are executives that are wanting to give you money, but they need to take you serious? Yeah. Do you think that I can go in like, oh my God, guys, like, hi, my name's Crystal, and I'm a ghost hunter, <laughs> and I like, I have blonde hair, and I love makeup. Do you think I can go in like that? No. No. You have to go have to in go thinking, yeah. speaking, and talking like a man. Like, you have to. You have no choice because they won't take mm -hmm. you serious. You're, mm -hmm. you're asking me for $15 million. Cut to the chase. Tell me what you want. And you have to lay it out there. Like, at this yeah. point, luckily, with Ghost Girl Diaries, I've been doing it for so long, and I know exactly what I want that I can literally eat, breathe, and sleep it. Like, literally, I can have an executive call me while I'm in bed, and I don't have to prep for it. Like, I'm ready. You already do. I don't know. I don't think Kat or Elfie would be prepared to do that. You know what I mean? It's a lot of work. You'd be like, wait, who are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's happening right now? Wait, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, let me get my notes. Yeah. Then if you said that, they would be like, all right, we're done with the deal. Bye. You know what click, I mean? Click, click. Literally mm -hmm. click. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody yeah, said, I'd end up crying. Them. I'd end up crying. I, that's what I did. <laughs> And I wasn't even in the meeting. Okay, the trauma. Someone said, I definitely don't comprehend it. It's hard for me. Yeah, you're not the only one. Kat doesn't quite... I don't really expect anybody... Like, Kat and... Like, Elfie has... Like, no offense to Kat, but Elfie has a lot of paranormal state under her belt. And she was re-signed many show. seasons. She has mm -hmm. what, 36 episodes under her belt, and she still is like, I don't even know, Crystal. Like, I don't even know. That's, I'm good. Yeah, she's, yeah. yeah, she's like, I am good. Go ahead. Like, be my guest. She's like, I don't want any part of it. And even Kat, after that one meeting, Kat was like, yeah, I just don't, I don't care to learn this at all. I don't care to learn this. Teach and me everything else but that. <laughs> I make jokes, though, with Kat, because I told her years ago, I was like, I want to be an executive producer. I'm going to be, I want my own show. Da, 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 da. And then here I am and I'm like, bitch, maybe you should have rethought that. No, I'm just kidding. No, Did I'm I? good at it now. <laughs> I mean, I am. I'm good you at it. You are quick. You, I mean, you've always been quick, but especially with, you know, these recent negotiations, you're just like, bam, bam. Yeah, ready to true. go yeah you know and and you learn those skills the more you do it it's true you know yeah failures and are your best always friend. learning it's true There's always learning yeah i am so blessed like and i like a few years ago i wouldn't have said this but like i've had so many failures with trying to get gg signed and i'm so happy for them like i am so blessed for them because now i know exactly what i want i know how to ask for it i know how not to be afraid of it I know, like, like it's yeah. almost like all of those failures were practice. 
And it sucks because it's like I've said before with society, sometimes if you fail and get knocked down, like, you know, you don't want to face failure and you just give up and you're done. But like, that's how you learn is falling. It's how you learn. Yep. That's how we get the most wisdom is by failure. You wish you could see how negotiations go. I don't know, man. (laughs) Drink. Cheers to that. Um, Okay. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Mm-hmm. No, when mm. I go into negotiations, I'm alone. I'm alone. Nobody goes with me. And that's the way they Balls want it. Deep. And that's, honestly, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to, t- I'd have, you'd have to be like um, an executive producer, like buy into GGD if you were going to negotiate with me. You're like sitting in the corner. Who, me? On. Oh, just me? Some, I know, like, just, you're like, <laughs> I'd like to be a fly on the wall during the negotiations to see how they go. But yeah, it's... Yeah. You never know. Sometimes they just talk among themselves and you're quiet and they're just trying. You have like 10 millionaires discussing how they would break up the funding for the, sh- the show. Yeah, and you're, and like, you're just Hello. sitting there like, so does that mean you're going to give it to me? No? Okay, I'm just I'm like asking. You know, like asking for a friend. No, I would never say that. But um, it is. It's intense. It's intense. It is. Okay, yeah. so I think that's what? it on, on you know, it. contracts yeah. are, are a pain in the butt. It sucks that you have to wait it out so long to get things rolling, but that's film life. Yeah. Then once mm-hmm. that door opens, you're good to go. Um, NDAs are great, in my opinion. Um, they mm-hmm. protect both parties from things. And, um, you know, it's like they get a bad rap because they, you know, a lot of people online are like, oh, well, NDAs are like you, how you get people to shut up. No, like it's, it's uh-huh. there to serve both people. And you, you have the right to ask for another NDA signed personally if you want to, or mm-hmm. you have the right to take it to a lawyer if you want to. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you've learned personal things, about each other, people get vendettas, you know, like my, my biggest um, threat of, I was thinking about this today, I think I ran it across you. Um, my enemies aren't like enemies like I know I have haters like you know there's always that like hater fan club that's online like everybody's gonna get it that lives their life publicly but yeah. my true enemies are actually people that used to be in my life who I've cut out and mm-hmm. um, you know I cut people out for a reason I snip people very easily because usually they've done me wrong like I, I have a big tolerance and a really big heart for people and in mm-hmm. fact I talked about this on Twitter earlier like I let I let red flags go and that's something I need to really work on um, is when you see a red flag is just like stopping it right there but I have a really big heart and I think people take advantage of that and when I get taken advantage of and I notice things I will cut people out quicker than Rihanna creating a pair of scissors for Fenty you know what I'm saying like (laughs) and people get upset by that people get upset by that because they they were first like so such a big part of your life and then you just cut them out because you know really essentially they were a toxic person in one way or another and so that's how I've created enemies is that people that used to be in my life and I don't want enemies but I think you know it's that syndrome of like being a very bright light I think when people get around me they realize how much of a hard worker I am, how much I'm willing to do for people, for my crew. I want people to succeed. I want people to have financial abundance. And then if they do something wrong to me, to where it pushes me to where I cut them out, I, they're gone. And that's the end of it. I don't look yeah. back. And I think people get really easily offended by that. And mm. um, I, I You're don't doing know. what's best for you. You do. And that's considered a boundary. And if people get upset about that, then that's their, then that's their insecurity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you shouldn't have to explain yourself. No, nobody should have to explain themselves when it comes to a boundary. It's only healthy staying, um, in your lane and making sure that the people that you're surrounded with or surrounded by are Mm -hmm. very positive. In fact, Jeff just came on. He's our, um, at, uh, our audio um, mixer for post-production and Jeff's amazing as well mm-hmm. and we we do we have um, an amazing people that we're surrounded by so we're very very blessed with that and life is mm-hmm. looking up and and things are getting going in a direction where I've always you know my dream for Ghost Girl Diaries um, has now arrived it's no longer a dream it's now coming to fruition and I think it's really cool um, it's, it's going to be cool to see it unfold. I'm hoping that I'll be able to film a little bit behind the scenes and then maybe release it later. Yes. It's exciting. Yep. So, okay, Lots that's really it on that, me. right? Do you have anything you want to add? Just it, contracts are scary. No, that was I mean, good. negotiations are scary and it is what it is and there's nothing you can do about it. It's true. It's true. 
and here we are. Yeah. All right, next thing. So I think we should just go into part two. Let's do. All right. Let's do. Um. Let's chat about like just reviews and call it a night. Okay. Is that good? Sounds like a plan. So I need some more wine for this. Are you out? Did you drink the whole no. bottle? No. No, I'm afraid I'm gonna get tired. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, I maybe need that's what time. you need. Maybe you need to just pass out. Okay, know. maybe I'll just do it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> you like pour more. Um, all right. With so reviews. So let's do two reviews. Let's do. Um, let's do Destination Fear. Okay. And then let's do. Did you watch it? Did you watch the first episode? Yeah. 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 And then let's. I haven't watched the second one yet, though. You haven't watched the second. I haven't watched the second one either. Yet. And then let's chat oh. about the Ghost Adventures episode last night. <laughs> was, yeah. Okay, so let's start. We're gonna with, need a drink for that one. I know. Um, Destination Fear, their intro. Um, they, they have a new intro. They have a okay, new intro. Okay, that's a start. That's a start. It looks better. It does. Honestly, it really does. Um, I think it fits them more. Yep. It's Whereas three the other one I in. felt was more like. I talked about a three season hump, so I think they should be good to go after this, so I'm very, very happy for them. Yay. Um, the intro though is is very like Elfie said like looks like Ghost Adventures. It's very like I mean I think it has the same like cinematography crew, so I'm not really shocked by right. that. Right, 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 right. It's like what did you think of the red and like red and green was that or red and blue light slashing or something like that? I think I think I have an understanding of like what they were trying to portray with the red. Oh, good, tell me because I don't the, know the red. The red to me kind of seemed a little tacky. I don't know. Like red, like red as in like scary, like blood, you think mm. of like horror type mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is kind of the vibe that I was getting as to why they were using it. I could be wrong. Right. But I don't know. To me, it looked a little tacky, but maybe that's me being, I don't know. I don't think it looked bad. I just thought it looked very much like my biggest thing is I, do, I want to separate myself as much as I can from Ghost Adventures because they are the cream of the crop. They have been top of the food chain. Unfortunately, not everybody can stay at the top of the food chain forever. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm happy that they changed it. It looks better. I think we're improving. I think we're moving in a good direction. They're still using footage of the over, like the, the drone over the RV. And I just, I think it's ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a filmmaker yeah. myself, I feel like you're wasting time for cinematography shots. You know what I mean? Mm, like you mm -hmm. could be using that time to show the location off a little bit better or something like send a crew. I don't know. I just... I don't want to see the ugly RV. Like I don't want to see it. I don't. I know that you're on your way there. I yeah. hope so. It's where you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like yeah. mm -hmm. um, this episode there at Waverly Hills. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Some strange things happened. First of all, they like threw themselves down the body chute. <laughs> Did you see that? that? Was a little weird. Yeah, it was a little strange. I mean, first of all, I hope they cleared it with security again. Like, cause there could be people living down there. That's true. And like. That's true. Uh, the cleanliness of putting yourself in a body shoot. I feel like they like literally would throw bodies down there, guys. Like they all walk down there. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. So what did you think about the pebble being thrown? Eh. I know. I have hopes. Yeah. Like I want them I do. to have they good evidence. They are getting evidence. better. Yes. They are getting better. They are. Like there are moments in it where it's like, oh, okay, you can see where that's changed or where that's like evolved. Mm -hmm. But then some of it, you're just like... Well, I can deal with, like, close. I think I've gotten used to the vlog footage at this point. Like, Dakota likes the yes. youtube -y vlog footage. Like, I can deal with that. That's their thing. It yeah. is. Yep, yeah. I can deal with that. I don't, I'm not, like, a fan of the seeing the RV drone footage. I'd rather see... I was panicked when they got Watch in it. the um, hot air balloon because there was a hot air balloon accident somewhere. Did you, did you hear about that? Okay, I heard about that, and... It almost seemed like there was like too many people in the basket. I know. I like, know. I was genuinely watching. I Everybody was like, that was in that hot air, like I think it was New Mexico or something. There was like, you always have to look it up. There was a hot air balloon, like, I don't know if it was like a fair or something, but something oh. happened. I think there was too much weight in the basket and there was like five or six people in the basket and everybody died. Like they plummeted to their death. So seeing Destination awesome. Fear, I was like, I mean, it, look, adrenaline, I'm there. I get it. But like. And, you know, death by balloon. Death by know. hot air balloon doesn't in a, in a basket. You you're like checking at heaven. So how'd you get here? I was in a basket. Died in a basket. And I floated um, back to the abyss. A floating basket. <laughs> it's like, just not a way to go. I don't know? know. That was just seemed kind of a little bit like a liability. Yeah, I, well, I, I was I, concerned. I feel like they should have gone like two and two. 
Or, you know what I mean? Like, well, just you have shoot a drone. It. Just go throw. Just you know, they're getting footage using the GoPros. We just use the drone. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's, it's my cinematographer just confused. So anyway, um, yeah. and I mean, I look, I, I see that they're doing like little mini adventures beforehand. Like I get what they're trying to do, but mm. I don't know. That was just whatever. I just don't want anybody to get hurt. I, that's all. I have noticed, however, that their little like adventures before they go to a location have gotten shorter. So they don't take up like half the episode, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, so, like a, stride mm -hmm. somewhere but then you get to like the location and the evidence and stuff and it it's very much like what Elfie said earlier which was like it just seems like well okay I feel bad for Dakota because if you look at his social media particular his Twitter he's always mm -hmm. talking about how he's doing editing okay he's editing so he's producing it he's an EP and he's editing it that guy is no life that is not fair get him a post production crew your three mm -hmm. seasons and Somebody's the pocketing in. the money. Stop pocketing yeah. the money and give him a post-production crew. He needs to have a life. That is not fair as a producer. That is not fair to him. And, like, yeah. I don't know if it's a control issue because I learned that from Zach, too. Of Like, he was in, you know, Zach t teaches everybody, like, you want to be in control of everything. I get that. Like, and I'll have the last say on my show of, like, what the last edit goes in. But I also want to enjoy the life that I'm creating for myself. I don't want to yes. be like out on the you know road filming and then back editing for 24 hours a day. Like that's not fair. That's not fair. So no. I hope that they take care of him eventually because that's not right. Um, well, and you think about it. Like I think there are a couple of other people, like a couple of his other friends that are editing with him. But if he's like the main editor, it's all it. Of course, things are going to fall through the cracks. You know what I mean? Like of course, things might not necessarily look where it needs to be because he's probably overworked mm -hmm. you know there's only so much creativity you can have in a you mean he's getting an, burnt an, out i agree probably yeah, yeah. yeah exactly well that's what i so, mean like he's making money at this point he's three seasons in i doubt he can even take a freaking vacation for himself to get away from it like he's not a robot like the they need to give it your three seasons in he has enough views give him a give him a post-production this isn't cool this is not okay yeah. And I yep. feel bad for him. Like, I know he sounds generally, like, happy. He's like, yeah, I'm editing again. But, like, yeah, on the inside, is he really that happy that he, like, can't go out and have fun with his friends or whatever? Like, it's just not, it's not cool. No. Um, let's see what else happened. So Tanner gets a bloody nose on, like, the third or fourth floor. I can't remember which floor it's on. That was a nasty one. It was a bad yeah. one. And you know what's interesting is the first thing I thought was stigmata. Whoa, yeah. And I was sitting there, I was like, wait, I was like paying attention. I was like waiting for someone to say stigmata, and nobody said it. And I was like, mm -hmm. stigmata, this is stigmata. Like, that's my opinion. When you're in a location and you get like bleeding from the eyes or bleeding from the nose or even from the mouth, it's stigmata, um, which usually mm -hmm. can lead to like maybe some satanic worship or who knows what was going on there. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I was, I was like, hmm, there's something up here. But then he ended up getting it, the, like, so they draw like locations out of a hat or whatever. And he had to go yeah. back to that location after he got the bloody nose. I didn't think that was right either, but I get that they were trying to push like his fear level or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they gave him the option too, like if he wanted to swap out or just not go up and he chose to do it. Dakota do it. was rambling quite a bit about psych psychological uh, yeah. do you remember that? And I was like, what mm -hmm. are you blathering about? I don't even, like I get it, like it's the trauma of the psyche that's like, but <sighs> I guess that takes the paranormal Ooh. aspect of it away. There's a point where you can be too much of a skeptic. You know what I mean? When you're investigating, mm -hmm. you know, like it comes to things like obviously if you see a pebble being thrown or like it's an animal or something or it can be explained. But I feel like that kind of just takes the fun out of paranormal investigating. Well, remember, they said in season one they weren't paranormal investigators, that they were urban explorers. So I don't know if they still stand by that. But, yeah, but that's weird because they're using paranormal equipment. Though. I know. I don't. I, nobody oh, knows. I, I'm yeah. I guess that part's still missing. But I think it'll get better. I think it will get better. It is. It is. I'd like to watch, you know, the, the second episode to see what happens. But, yeah, he was blathering yeah. about um, what it does to your psyche being in a haunted location. And yeah. I was just like, okay, I don't know. You lost me, like, ten minutes ago. And then, um, well, it's true. It's like you're in Waverly Hills. Like, let's see. Let's see Waverly Hills. I want to see more investigation. I want to see... 
I, I guess another thing that's kind of strange to me is too, like they get the locations, they go to sleep in that location, but you don't really see them like investigate. Tanner does. Mm-hmm. Tanner's pretty much like involved, but like, like Chelsea was like asleep and they woke her up on the walkie. And I was like, bitch, yeah. why are you sleeping in Waverly Hills? Like you're in a cot by yourself. And wait, who can, who, you're crazy girl. Like how are you sleeping through this? Yeah. And then there was another thing that happened. So I was starting to really get into the episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone said, can I dive deeper into stigmata? Um, I stigmata, don't... too, is also um, a religious term mm-hmm. for um, having, like, the holes in your hands and feet, like, as Jesus was crucified on the cross. Representing Christ, basically. Um, yeah. It yeah, can be I... used by the devil to mimic or mock uh, someone who's in fear. Yeah. So usually, so they're basically re- replicating what happened when Christ was on the cross. And so when I see blood like that coming out, like Tanner's nose was really ble- bleeding, bleeding. The first mm-hmm. thing I think is stigmata. Cause like whatever energy is creating for him to like get an actual bloody nose is really strong. Whatever energy's in there. That was bad. It was, was bad. bad. Yeah. And, but they didn't mention stigmata. So maybe they're not familiar with no. the term. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, yeah. that can be skeptical. Like some people are skeptic on stigmata. Um, Mm-hmm. I don't know. I have opinions yeah. on it. We'd have to do a whole nother stream on that because that's a whole nother I think rabbit that'd hole. Be a fun topic. That would be, yeah. especially There's with lots of different theories. Yeah, Kat I'm gonna do that. To talk about my, my priest friend, Father Christian, um, oddly enough, that's his name, Father Christian. Um, he did exorcisms and um, he talks about stigmata as Ooh, well. Ooh, you need to get some tea on that. Yeah, I should. I, we should do a stream on it. I just wrote it down. Yes, <laughs> that would be good. Cool. I'm actually convinced he had had it and he has scars from it because he has a huge scar on his left hand, wow. like right in the center where, you know, w- which would represent like Jesus being nailed to the cross type mm-hmm. of whatever you believe in. Um, so it's really interesting. And then he mm-hmm. had his, um, I guess to get into personal stuff, he had his uh, pleurisy situation. Remember when you went to the hospital and right. he was bleeding out his eyes? Oh, shit. So, you know, there's lots of tea on that. Mm. We'll have to talk about that for yeah, sure. That's a good, yeah, that's Kat's got yeah. some good stories, too, on her side of things. <laughs> um, yeah, we should, let's do that. That sounds good. That sounds yeah. like some tea. Um, so Tanner has to go back up there. So then Tanner, so, okay, so I'm, like, in the episode at this point. I'm like, this is good. Like, I'm proud of him. Like, like I'm into this. I'm into this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Tanner walkies everybody, and he's like... I just saw a shadow apparition walk across, like, the, the screen. Which, by the way, I have watched that over and over again, and I didn't really yes. see anything. Did you? I did. Oh, you did? Okay. And I did. And at first I thought it was a bat because of the way it looked like wings were, like, moving in. Like, like it saw someone, and then it was like, holy crap, like, you know, like, get darting out of the room. But when you zoom in on it, I saw what looked like tentacles. What? I don't know if anyone else saw that, but we should rewatch it. I'm going to screenshot it and, and send it to you. I'm curious on your take on it, but it literally looked like Cthulhu. Ooh. Like, it, liter- it looked like a little Cthulhu, or like a little squid that was like, ooh. Like, like it literally <laughs> popped in and you saw these tentacles, like, move in and then Ew. out. Yeah, so I'm very curious as to what ki- type of entity that could have been. Um, See, that's when I would go right down, up- like, rabbit holes online looking for, like, um like forums of people who've experienced things on Waverly to see mm-hmm. if anyone else has experienced something like that. I feel like that would have been something like summoned in. I right. feel oh, like yeah. that was not. Well, that's why I said stigmata when I saw his face bleeding. I was like, dude, that's stigmata, like straight up. Yeah, there's some issues. Which is why I said I don't think you should be putting Tanner back up there, but that's none of my business, and I guess if he's comfortable. He did the thing, yeah. you know? I mean, kudos to him. Kudos to him. So then sure. they... <sighs> They like scream and they go show everybody uh, fine, but then the episode ends. Yeah, it's like over before it even started. I know, I and I was like, I was really getting into it. So I don't know, is it the way he's editing it that it's just like you have to remember, like as a filmmaker, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? So you have to have like an intro. You have to have like um, like an actual intro. Then you have like an introduction of location. Then you have like um, a historical you know portion of like where we're at and why we're here. Then you have mm-hmm. like the prep of the investigation. Then you have the actual investigation. 
then yeah. you need to have like a story within the investigation and it has to peak at some point like a regular story and then it has to have like the disintegrate where you're coming back down from it and I feel like however wow. it's being edited is not it doesn't feel like that like you learn it even like as uh, like an like an English class like when you're writing doing creative writing in English class um, how yeah. do you feel about it I felt I guess it's hard because at first like I felt that it was possible maybe they didn't get a ton of evidence um, and that's why maybe it, it like like was cut short because they didn't have a ton of evidence and they just kind of moved it along mm-hmm. but it is a pretty common theme in a lot of their episodes mm-hmm. So I, I would assume it's probably just an editing situation, right. editing scenario. Nikita has um, a very good question. Um, Nikita, is there any type of creature known to haunt Waverly? I mean, I think it's one of those places sort of like Bobby Mackey's where they've let people come in, and I mm-hmm. doubt that they watch what they're doing if they're summoning. You just don't know. So I wouldn't doubt if there's anything, in the, honestly, like anything and everything, especially Waverly's huge. Shadow I've never people. heard of an octopi... Uh, Cthulhu personally haunting it yeah Mm -hmm. um I'm very curious because it was small like it wasn't a full body it was literally like this black mass that came out and then you saw its tentacles move in and then it shot out the frame and I was like what were those tentacles that came out like and that's when I was like holy shit that's not a bat see that's weird I have a big tv and maybe it's just so blurry like pixelated I have a 4k tv but I literally like couldn't I see it. Take maybe I need to watch uh, it on my phone. Maybe I, maybe I'll yeah. try to watch it on my phone. I, or watch it on your like computer or something. Okay. But I definitely want to take like a screenshot of it, maybe post it on Twitter for you guys to like take a peek at. Yeah. To see weird. like what you guys think because um that was like otherworldly. That was otherworldly. Well, it was good. Out. I wish we just would have seen more. And like it, Elfie said yeah. the same thing. Elfie's like, I just watched it and she's like, I just felt like it was over before it started. Well, you know what's really great too is because they're so open to like you know, wanting to overcome their fears and like, I think they are invested in like the history and stuff. It mm-hmm. is fascinating. Um, they have such potential when it comes to getting good evidence because they have gotten really wonderful evidence and at other locations. Mm-hmm. So I just wish they would tap into that a little bit more because mm-hmm. I feel like they could, it would really help them, mm-hmm. you know, where people would just be really even more drawn in because they, they capture a lot of good stuff. Yeah, they did. You know? So. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But so, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm going to watch the second Me episode. Too. Mm-hmm. T- tomorrow and then they have a new episode i think airing tomorrow oh shit. To catch up on both i think it's on saturdays they yeah. as long as they don't show dakota dumping the poo poo out of the rv again honestly that uh, was okay. just not necessary there was some trauma with that episode uh, that made <laughs> me not want an rv honestly and like, like i'm planning on buying an rv and i was like oh well, we'll hire really? somebody to do that you know plan Nobody's gonna go poo poo in the RV, okay? If you need to go, we're we're pulling over to a gas station, okay? Look, I'm just saying I might, but you know, nobody deserves to empty that shit out. Do you get it? Just kidding. No, oh my uh. god, I can't. <laughs> my god, we're diving too heavy in the wine. Oh my god, Fine. stop! Rock the wine's falls. making me hot. I'm getting, I need whoop. some more rock falls. Okay, whoop. this is why we don't do. We're gonna wine need some more wine for the next uh, year. No, I'm just kidding. All that too, but the next um. Oh, Jesus Lord. All right, so... All right. Um, the next I'm one... I'm mixing it up so I wake up. <laughs> you have Coke now. Well, this, is hot, the last, this is our last section. Day. Yeah, we're just, doing, we're just doing Ghost Adventures and that's it. Um, yeah. So last night was this anticipated episode. Apparently there was a lot of backlash online it's about it. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't going to watch it because I kind of just was like... I kind of blew it off and like just didn't care. But like... People started tweeting at me about it. I started getting DMs about it. Like, they were like, are you going to watch it? Yeah. And I was like, well, I, I heard about it, but I was like, like, what of? You know what I mean? And so so the ruckus about it, let's talk about the ruckus, is um, allegedly Holly and Here. Zach have been dating for a few years. And mm-hmm. um, nobody's gone public about it. So there's been, like, the fans are like, why aren't you going public oh, about your relationship? I don't. It's their business. Like, I don't go public about my relationships because y'all can be assholes. Y'all can be <laughs> savage. True. That is well, why. You know, don't, don't, don't know boundaries. You know what I'm saying? It's like, true. God, when you keep shit let's, private, let's there's a reason you're keeping it private. Like, I'm not saying this is what he said. So don't take it out of my mouth. This is what I'm saying. No. I don't well, post about my relationships because I don't want people's opinions on it. Well, that too. And, like, especially with, like, 
fans of Zacks and stuff too. It's oh, the Baganites. Like embarrassing. The, the Baganites. Like, God, like let someone live their life. They aren't entitled to telling you every bit of it. Sorry, boo. Yeah, they you know? finally like, backed off of me when they figured out I was married. I was like, bye. Um, that was rough for quite oh, a few years. Crazy. It was so bad. Um, right. Yeah, I was on sick, posts man. and everything. It was a nightmare. So oh, I'm getting hot from this wine and this is stressful. Um, you know what? You need to have more. Okay. Uh, have so more. after I got messages from you guys on social media, um, everybody was like, you got to watch the episode and tell us what you think. And I was like, oh, fuck. I don't even know. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. It was airing at a time. I thought it was airing. And then people were like, oh, it's on Discovery Plus. And I, so I texted Crystal. I was like, we need to watch it. I know. I didn't realize. Yeah. So he's not on travel at all now, right? No, well, it, but on the Discovery app, it is under Travel Channel. So does it? Do you guys know? Is it? Does it air at all on Travel, or is it just streaming? I don't oh, even know. Right, right, right. You know yeah, what I, I mean? Like, I think because I've seen some people so. in the comments that have said, "I'm not paying for Discovery Plus. I pay for Discovery yeah. Plus because I freaking love TLC and I'm addicted to 90 Day Fiance, 100. percent Yeah, Crystal got me hooked on that. Oh my god, you gotta hurry up and get to this season because it's so I think good. I'm on Six. I think I'm on six. Also, but I think you need to start scary. watching The Single Life because it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Big Gosh. Ed, you need to look for Big Ed. He's hilarious. Anyway. All right. So, um, the episode. Memes. Do what? Oh, the Big Ed memes. I was like, I was trying to do the no neck thing, but it's the fine. no neck. Poor guy. He's got something wrong. I don't remember what it's called. It's like his his <laughs> like spine. His head is like fused to his spine or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, good for him. He just keeps going. You know what I mean? He's trucking along. Um. Five. Uh, okay, my train a lot. It's, it's the wine. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> it's been a long year. The Holly Madison episode. Yes. So there was a ruckus going on online about it, and basically a lot of people. I went through the comments because I was just being nosy. Um, these yeah. are mainly comments on like uh, Ghost Adventures Twitter and Instagram, and people were like, "We're ban we're boycotting this episode, we're banning it, da da da, da. like we're done, like you know, don't mix business with pleasure." Um, you know, and I'm like, look, dude, you know, it's his show. It's yeah. his show. Yeah. He can do whatever Let he wants. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, oh, someone said I'm also addicted to 90 Day Franchise. Me too. Holler. It's so good. So crazy good. It's so good. It's one of my faves. Um, <laughs> so it starts out that, um, he's going to be investigating, he's helping a friend, which I thought that was interesting. Did you catch that? He said it like eight times. I know. <laughs> when we, when a friend is in need. Yeah, there's my friend. There's there's just, some like, other okay. tea that I've seen online, and and I don't gossip, but I'm gonna gossip because I had some wine. Um, that supposedly <laughs> they have been broken yeah. up for a while, um, but yeah. decided to uh, stay together to make it look like they were together until this episode aired, um, per Zach's request. So, which honestly, that sounds like something he would do. I'll be honest with you. Like, that's weird. That's like, um, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a PR stunt. Wouldn't yeah. that be like an appropriate way to say it? It's yeah. like a PR yeah, stunt? That's correct. So, yeah. do I know? I don't know. I have no idea what's going on in his personal life, nor do I care. Um, I'm, I'm negotiating. I'm busy. Um, <laughs> Literally, a woman. Okay. I'm tired, and I'm I'm. I just need a really long nap and a vacation. You need more wine and a nap. <laughs> so, like, so he he said we're at a friend's house to help a friend, and I'm like, yeah, we get it. Okay, like you're trying. To, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever. So yeah. they're in the Hollywood Hills now. Um, I feel like the history was a little uh, like on the area. If you're not familiar with Hollywood or that area, um, yeah. that area in particular used to be native land. I don't wow. know the indigenous population that was there. I don't know the actual tribe that was there. I do think like other native tribes, they were forcefully removed from the land. But mm -hmm. if I, I didn't, did I take you through the Hollywood Hills? I don't think I took you up there, did I? No, no. So that area in particular, so like I think the area she lives in is probably like guarded and gated. So you can't just go drive through there. You know what I mean? So like, don't just mm -hmm. try it. But there are yeah. some areas you can drive through and... When he said it feels like a portal, he's absolutely correct. Um, I don't know if anyone's watching has seen or, like, been to those areas in particular I'm talking about, which is basically the bottom of the mountain or the hills where the Hollywood sign is. Because if you could see on the episode, you could see the Hollywood sign in the background. 
the area is very strange. I can't really explain. Like, I'm going to be real and say that I'd never buy a house there. Because, and they're beautiful homes. Like, and they're very custom homes. They're very, like, different homes. Like, even if you ever get bored, like, go on Zillow and just look at, like, homes in the Hollywood Hills. They're all very different because, you know, like, like, this guy was a doctor. And, like, obviously a lot of producers and executive producers have built their own, like, custom homes. And they're old. And, um, you know, the Spanish-style homes are beautiful. But um, mm. it is haunted. It's very strange up there. I can't really explain what it is. Like, it does, it feels like chloride. Oh, Except God. it's like times like it's very large because it's like the oh, whole God. yeah, it is and like that you, place. Oh my God! Yeah, and you know what that feels like? How how do you describe it? A portal. A portal. <laughs> like, literally, it literally feels like just a portal. It does. You know? Yeah, like it feels like yeah. there's just shit coming in and out, and you don't even know where it's coming from. Like it just it doesn't feel like home. I know that sounds strange, but like a normal area. Yeah. Yeah. So when they said they were in that area, I was like, well, I'm not shocked that it's haunted. So I don't like there's some people online saying they think that Holly faked that her house was haunted. I don't think so. Like, I don't I don't I think it's haunted for sure. I think no. it's not just her house, though. I think it's the whole area. So that's not very shocking to me. Um, yeah. Let's see. The, they opened with um, Bridget from Girls Next Door. Why didn't they um, introduce them as the Girls Next Door? No. Or Maybe like they're trying Playboy to like separate bunnies? themselves from it. Maybe they're trying to like create their own thing. I don't know. Yeah. That's weird though. They looked like they were both getting ready to go play tennis. I was really confused with the tennis outfits. I think I was more confused with why a sweater was worn and the tennis shoes. Maybe they wanna okay. maybe they play tennis professionally or something. Like maybe they like work out. I don't know. Is that gonna attract ghosts? It could, well, like, you're I mean, right. I don't know. Like whatever. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I have some concerns. It was trendy. It was trendy. Um, I okay. I told Crystal that I, I felt like I was looking back at like a two thousands magazine. <laughs> like yeah. I feel like I was in the early two thousands. Yeah, you I was did like, say what that. Is happening. Yeah. Literally. Um. So. The very first, like the very first thing I want to talk about is, there was a horrible cinematography shot that happened. Oh my god. And I talked about it on um, I love on that Instagram. Story. Oh my gosh! And I don't. Yeah, that was who bad. was behind the camera? If even if it was Jay, you're fired. Who was behind we need the camera? No. <laughs> who did that? No, but that was a bad plane situation going on. There was here. a like... shot where Holly was like on steps, and then Zach was oh. down by like a was it a garage or something or like I don't even something know down the hill and or whatever. She for looked like a behemoth giant. And he looked like this, like, little planter's peanut man. Oh and the shot was horrible. And well, like, it was... I feel like it was supposed to be edited out for some reason, because when they showed the clip, it was, like, two seconds long. <laughs> did you notice well, that? I did, but, like, <laughs> like he has... Shows, like, he's EP. He's supposed to have last say when when he's... Why didn't he know... Why didn't he say, this good. shot is bad, yeah, guys? True. Or, like, couldn't they have, like, cut the shot and, like, shown Holly talking and then cut to him? Yeah. It looks terrible. That They're is, like, memes now. That's like, an example of terrible cinematography. It just, it looked horrible. And that, you said there were memes. I didn't even know that. There were memes. I have, I still have to send them to you. Oh, I have my God. Them See, that tells film. you that people pay attention to film, even though they say they don't know about film. You still pay it attention like to the shot. It was, like, two seconds. You had to be, like, quick to catch but that But he did. One. He looked all, like, weird. He looked like Gollum. And she was, like, was like I know. So bad. Um, so, the, anyway, I'm complaining about that because I'm a filmmaker, and that was an annoyance to me. So I'll <laughs> let it go after that. I just. Like, who did that? I did. <laughs> the first thing I texted Kat, like, this is so I bad. I am hiring them for this, him. Who's okay. behind the camera? <laughs> Fuck, who did this? <laughs> so bad. Um, I'm sorry, but like when there's oh. one bad shot, it just makes the rest of it go to shit. You know, like it's just bad. Yeah. Don't I've never seen Ghost Adventures oh, with bad okay. cinematography. It was bad. <laughs> <sighs> you guys have had 25 seasons under your belt to practice. What are you doing? That was rough. That was really bad. 25 though. seasons. <laughs> there should not be bad shots at this point. I'm sorry. Period. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that was my biggest complaint about the whole that. episode. You um, like stressful. It was to bad, watch. wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it I'm was. crying. It was so bad. Okay. Woo. Um. Then we go inside the house, and why doesn't she have a lot of stuff on her walls? The house just seemed very like unlived in. Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she only lives there part time or something like that. Like a lot of celebrities have like multiple houses. So yeah, that's what I would assume is um, happening. Then they t- he took out I think it was the Trifield meter and he has it in front of Holly. He's asking the ghost to move the Trifield meter and he screams in her face and she like jumps backwards. He's like, Wah! I know. And I get was, really excited. He's like, I'm Aww. so sorry. I get really excited about this. And I'm like, okay. So this is apologize. a little uncomfortable yeah. to watch, but it's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then she's talking about like, there's a creature that maybe lives outside the gate. Is that what it was or something like that? Yeah. Something like that. And, um, then she's off camera talking to Bridget saying she heard like growling she or she didn't like tell him the truth or she didn't tell the whole story right and right. this is the part where you see the chemistry between them which is like the that's the moment where you're like this probably shouldn't have been filmed you know what i mean like this as in this episode because it was just really awkward cuz you're just like you're in on somebody's private life and you're like you're now you're seeing the chemistry between them as like a couple and you're kind of like Ooh, this feels a little bit awkward um so she comes it in like awkward. giggling with bridget and i was like Ugh. like how did you f- what, 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 i was just like are we 10 i was like god it sounded like like teenagers and what they is were that? And then, like you're Grow laughing up. about like a demon outside of your gate like i just don't think it's funny. i heard like growling outside and it just sounded like something in like a hollywood movie well then he was like talking to her like a dad like he was like holly you didn't tell me about this. Why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, ooh, ooh. I just feel awkward and I shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> like, I feel like I shouldn't be here. <laughs> it was awkward. Well, even like Holly's laugh was like, <laughs> like it was just like, okay, turn the cameras off now, please. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Like, can it we just, fine. let's cut this whole yeah. scene out. Let's just, just cut this, this whole This is thing. wrong, okay? Let's fire that it cinematographer. Did. It felt very and private, fine. and it felt like it just, I don't know, I wouldn't want that captured, like, my life. Like there was a lot of filler. Like, there was a lot of filler in there. <sighs> okay. You know? So, so you felt awkward about that, too. It wasn't just me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I felt awkward. I felt like it was just a private moment, and I shouldn't have seen it. That's all. Um, you know, okay, so then, okay, what happens next? Okay, so then he hears, like, footsteps. I don't know, I feel like it was kind of slow going. Did you feel like it was slow? Uh, uh-huh. I don't, and yeah. they're using the new XLS camera. Camera. Did you say, uh, wait, XLS? Yeah. Is that right? XLS or yeah. XLS SLS? Something. I don't know how they did it. I, it looks yeah. like it was rigged from probably Bill Chapel that, like, gave them something, um. Yeah like extra it doesn't record itself so they have it rigged on a camera and did you see the delay in the relay when they were trying to record it it was terrible throw it out it was engineered badly go back to the sls i can't see anything it's blurry and it would like it would like freeze screen and i was like it's trash throw it away get a new one it's just bad so i don't I, I thought it was a waste of time. Once again, it was the same thing I said with, De- you know, Destination Fear. It was, like, wasting cinematography time. Like, I want to see what's going on, like, paranormal-wise. I don't want to see this, like, stagnant shit SLS camera that you're using that I can't see anything through. Right. Um, but, like, I did think it was cool that he was getting a reaction with the light flickering. I did think that was cool. That Once was again, I did cool. feel like it just was a little personal. Like, she's a celebrity, and then she had a camera crew in her house, and I just feel like that she's just now let millions of people into her home and i yeah. it made me feel weird it made me feel weird like i can't i don't know how do you what, what do you think oh well, they had like lots of shots of it outside and like the backyard yeah. her maintenance person like i feel like that was just i don't know invasion of privacy but maybe that's how she wants it i don't know who knows? Well, I was thinking, I was yes, like, oh my god, empty. she's probably going to get stalkers that find her and shit, you know what I mean? Because, like, she's showed the whole damn thing. The whole enchilada is out there. Phobia, she kind of brought it. There. I know! Then he you says know, she like... has a, a terrifying fear of someone burglarizing her house. And I was like, why did you effing just why say are that? Why you filming at the house? <laughs> like, literally! I was yeah. like, why did you just say that? Yeah, she's gonna sad. get some crazy person now that they know like they're gonna get their jollies off on the fear that she's scared people are gonna break in her house and I'm like oh my god that should not have been ca- that needed to be edited out 
feel yeah. bad for Holly. She doesn't deserve that. No. Um. Anyway. Uh. Okay. So okay. Yeah. Now we get involved with Petty Negri. 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 Yes. And supposedly she has a seance in her house. Bridget's there, and then her maintenance man decides to join the fun. <laughs> yeah. So, what are your opinions on That's Patty? Nice. How do you feel about Patty, and what are your opinions on it? I, it's hard, because I do believe that she has abilities. I do, too. Um, but I feel like they've been overdone with Ghost Adventures. Yeah. Kind of the feeling that I have, and I think that's kind of been um, not a good thing for her. Well, and I feel like when a psychic is spot on every single time, it, like, I don't feel like that's realistic. I also just kind of felt that there was a little moment in there that seemed a little, like, staged. Like, her reaction to something seemed a little, I don't know, bizarre. When he was stating that, like, you know, just to reiterate, like, we haven't spoken at all. You know, so, like, you don't yes, know Yes, history. yes, her, yes. Her response was, like... She was, like, mm-hmm. Was and I was, very, like, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. This felt... That felt like acting to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, it just did. So, maybe she did well, know the history. Well, okay, well, time the fuck out for a second. Okay? Let's, let's just be real here. Mm. You're telling me that your paranormal friend that's a psychic went to your girlfriend's house to do a seance and you didn't hear about it? <sighs> yeah. Please. Please, I don't. So that's it. probably where that. That's probably why that energetically like felt weird. Yeah, <sighs> you know. But I mean, was... but I'm not like judging Patty for it. I it's like her. her fault. I no. like her. It's just sometimes she's been placed in a couple different episodes where it's kind of made her look weird. Well, yes, one of the episodes was that guy that was in like uh, Pasadena, California, and he was this mm-hmm. like actor who faked this whole like fake house. Remember, I like called him out on it. Yep. And then he was trying to get people for psychic readings, and I called him out on it again. Because mm-hmm. I was like, this dude is not a psychic, he's a professional dancer. Like, maybe he has those abilities, but the fact that it it was connected with Patty, I just didn't think it looked good. You're right. Like, you get one bad <laughs> rap as a psychic, you got to keep your record really clean when you're a psychic. And if, if it's yep. not, that one little bit of bad credibility will just, like, you know, throw you straight down the toilet. And, like I said... I, I think it's unrealistic to say that a psychic is real 100% of the time. Right. You can't, like, right. I know real psychics. Like, I have a friend that's in Arizona who is so psychic, it's not even funny. And she yeah. even tells me, don't believe everything everybody says. Even me, like, everything is subject to change. Mm-hmm. So when someone's that accurate, yeah. I'm like, mm, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. But, like, that's okay, you know, whatever. Now, yeah. next thing I have to say about the... um uh, what is it? Uh, seance. Yeah. Is, is, am I wrong? Correct me if I'm wrong. Do I, and I don't know much about Holly. Mm. She has, uh, kids. Yes. That are underage. Yes. That are like literally under like 10. I don't agree with her doing a seance in the house that they live in. Yeah. And they weren't mentioned at all in there, which I'm kind of happy about honestly but it does make you wonder like why would you perform a seance and open something where your kids are going to be staying i don't agree with it i don't agree with it i've Um, I've always said like even if you don't have kids i have preached for years to not investigate your own house yeah it's not safe you're you're if even if it's haunted okay even if your house is haunted and you're investigating you're basically opening up a communication channel with whatever's there and you're telling whatever is there it's okay to communicate with you which means the doors are going to slam open harder. You're going to hear more voices. You're going to hear more knocks. Things are going to break. And it's not necessarily because the energy is angry or violent. It's because it's trying to get your attention because you've opened up a communication channel. And it's not easy to just shut it off. And when you have kids, I have concerns with them getting involved when they might be getting nightmares at night. They might be getting sleep paralysis. They might be yeah. seeing shadow people. Like I remember being a kid and my aunt's house was haunted and I saw that stuff. And luckily I could open communication with my family and talk to them about it. But that's terrifying as a child to go through that. And so, yeah, yeah. I think that just having a seance just amplifies it 10 times more. Yeah, that that's not smart, especially when you know that there's something going on. You know, it's not good. No. It's not good. So I just yeah. don't agree with anybody, especially people that have kids. I just don't think it's safe. Um, yeah. And, and if you do do that, then make sure that you have a pastor or, like, you know, a preacher in there ready to, like, 
bless the house and then someone in to like sage it out because it's just not it's just not safe in my opinion just, i think when you give it attention it gives it more power yeah and knows how to funnel more power yeah um, and it's not something that it just goes away like don't think like someone said like her kids are in vegas yeah, but they're going to be coming back at some point. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to come back at some point. They're going to live there. The ghost isn't just going to go away. It's not like the ghost like, you know what? Your kids are back, so I'm going to leave for the week. I'll see, I'll see you in a few weeks. You know, that's not how it works. Um, no, <laughs> can you imagine? Not. That'd be nice if they did. Can you yeah, leave, thanks for the heads up. leave the polite. rent check on your way out if you don't mind? It's true. <laughs> the ghost check. The ghost rent check. Um, true. Then he's, uh, I felt awkward with him sitting in the bed. Yeah, that was weird. That was like, I don't know, you know, you just get images and you're like, we didn't need to do that. Um, once, just the whole thing, we didn't need to do it. You know what I mean? Um, and then we go into, Jay is going to go outside and look for portals. That was so silly. I laughed I my ass off at that. first when they were, he was like, he's going to look for portals. I posted something on Twitter because I was like, you're like, I was like, how is he going to, how do you find a portal? How do how does one find said portal? I would like to know. I don't know. I mean, Take good for him. I mean, I'm just saying. But it's funny because the first thing I thought was, <sighs> I know the area well, and there's mountain lions and coyotes and obviously bobcats. And, like, I was like, oh, my God, Jay is going out. And then he's like, he's going out alone. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to be food. With, like, a ton of gear, by the way. Well, like and and then the hill is so steep, Kat. He was on hands and yeah. knees crawling up the hill. Like, this was not thought out, okay? Like, I was this screaming. Not, I was like, oh my there's god. There's some liability going on here, okay? Oh. Is kind of what's happening, all right? <sighs> this is an accident waiting to happen, and that's exactly what happened. Which I've heard online, some people have messaged me that bobcats don't attack humans. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, whatever. Like, fine. I mean, they don't that doesn't you make still. it less scary. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if it was jumping at him, like. And if it was clearly following him around the building, like, you know, like they had it on camera, if that's the on case. On camera? Yeah. Literally, well, yeah. he probably may have thought you know, the bobcat probably thought there was like something rustling for food, you know. And honest to god, he's probably not out there with the flashlight, he's out there with the night vision camera. The bobcat's like, This looks delicious, man. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, get a little nibble, get a little tasty. So, food. I'm I'm watch, I'm sitting there and I'm like, Okay, I just hope that this episode revives eventually, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just waiting for it to revive itself. And, yeah. and they did catch some good evidence, by the way, but then all of a sudden. Zach's like, I'm getting a call from Jay. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I just knew something happened. Like, hell, he was like, I thought it was a mountain lion, though, honestly, because I've seen mountain lion. Like, they have cubs up there and everything. Like, it's not even funny. Like, they'll take your dogs. Like, you don't want to let your dogs out. That was weird. What happened? That was weird. I just, like, saw something. Um, that was, like, really creepy. What was it? Um, Mountain lion? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like, coming out, darting out. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. Jay was with the mountain lion. If it was if it was a mountain lion, he probably would be dead. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, well, especially like, if they filled territory because yeah. it's happened in Colorado. It doesn't happen often when you get attacked by a mountain lion, but if you're near like their where their cubs are or like their den, they will attack. Mm-hmm. They will run up. They will chase you. They will run after you. Mm-hmm. And if he was yeah. in the dark, there's no way he would have made it out. So um, you hear, oh. and I I just so messed up. Like I feel so bad laughing about this, but like. You hear Jay's voice, and he's like, Zach. And I'm just like, oh, my God, he's dead. Like, his leg's gone. Something's missing. Like, I started to panic. I got up and paced, literally. And he was like, I'm hurt. And I was like, oh, my God. He's, like, his arm's missing. Like, he's been drugged. No one knows where he is. Someone's drugged his body. And I was, so I was panicked at first. But then when they go out and find him. (laughs) He's just laying his leg got hooked on the tree i thought what did you think i mean i thought i said i hope that he didn't hurt his balls that was (laughs) it was a stroke of luck all right if the balls saved him god gosh darn it you get it jay Thank God, <laughs> you know? Like, they replayed the camera footage, and he's like, ha! And then you just see, like, roll, and he's just like, I mean, I shouldn't laugh. I'm glad he didn't fall off the cliff, you know My I mean? gosh! Uh, why did they keep the audio on that? <laughs> <laughs> just, like, it's mute true. that, and it's like, 
get the footage of him rolling, okay? Like That's true. Fuck, well, they probably the wanted audio. to show it to make sure, like, people didn't think he actually got attacked by, like... Ooh, like, ah, ooh! <laughs> like, no, literally. like, there wasn't a lot of noises after he started rolling. It was pretty much oh. just, like, the brush. You just could hear the brush, and I was like... Why am I laughing? <sighs> it's not funny. Like, it's not no, funny. No, I'm glad he's okay, obviously. Me but too. He got I, bruised, though. He like, did. all those cuts. Yeah, he got beat up. He got beat up. Ooh! So, yeah, but then, hard. like, it, the episode stopped, and I was like, I, you know, and I, I get it, it, but I, I get it, like, they wanted to make sure Jay was okay, like, I get it, that's a great crew, yeah. but I was like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe they'll, like, go back the next night or something, you know, and then right. that was it, and I was like, oh, shit, that was it. That was it. Jay and then it ended. got saved by a tree, and he almost not, I, I mean, he probably hit his balls on something. Saved by his balls? By, like, a boulder or something, like, legit. <laughs> oh, Poor guy. Probably guy. knocked the wind out of him, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it sounded like it, and the way he was laying, <laughs> it was like... I know, Zach's like, okay? he's splayed out and everything, there's bricks and all kinds of shit, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's not funny. I was just, it's I'm glad he's okay, I know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm one of those people that laughs when people get you hurt. laugh? Yeah, I'm the same way. I do. It's so bad. Oh no, I laugh when I get hurt too. Oh yeah, I'll no, I'll hysterically laugh if I get hurt, you know. But like, oh my gosh. once I realized he wasn't, you know, getting drug off by a cougar, I was fine. You know what I mean? Like, but anyway, yeah. Fine. Then the episode ended, and like they did a review with Holly, and like they don't always do reviews, so that tells me they didn't have enough um, footage to like fill. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, because that's yeah. like that's a very ghost hunters thing to do at the end is to like do a, rev a review with the owner or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. And I was like, so that tells me they didn't have any other footage. So I mean, they did catch some evidence. Like uh, people are online saying they think it's fake. I don't think it's fake. No. I think it's real. Like that whole area is haunted. It's not just her house. But yeah. you know, um, was it kind of a little cringy to watch? A little bit, yeah. It was a little, a little lackluster. Not yeah, gonna lie. Yeah, it was, it was like. Little, eh. It was a little awkward. It was a little awkward. I think everyone kind of expected that, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And the haters watched. You know what I mean? Oh, so. people that, like, are in love with Zach that want to date him, for sure, were, like, on You can that talk shit. about crap however long they want, but they watched it, so. It's true. They gave him you know? the review, or the views, so, you know, you're just helping boost his, you know, hopefully getting signed for a 48th season, for God's sake, at this point. God. Season 48. Season 48. He's like in a wheelchair. Like, hey guys, we're a going on A motorized scooter. Jesus lord. They're gonna have an SLS cam built into the scooter. <laughs> Shit, it's gonna be like a so Tesla cool. on a motor scooter. Oh okay, I'm just saying, someone pay me a cut if you make that. Oh because, my god. You know, Cat's like, I'm claiming rights and I'm liability on that. I'm of that. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. So yeah, I, it was just uh, I was a little I was underwhelmed. Um, I was also yeah. underwhelmed with Destination Fear. Um, mm -hmm. I'm concerned at this point, you know, especially with that cinematography shot that really bothered me. I know that sounds stupid, but like as a filmmaker, that was really bad. That and looks if he had the last say and watched it and missed it, that tells me he's getting tired. Yeah, it tells me he's getting tired, and maybe it's just time to time to hang it up. You know what I mean? If you're missing a shot like that, you shouldn't keep that in there. And, like, that's okay. Like, he's killed it for a long time. Like, he, he's done amazing. Like, he should be very, very proud of himself um, for yeah. going 25 seasons. Like, I don't think anyone's ever going to top that, and I think that's great. No. But, you know, mm -hmm. he ne he needs to, like, learn to enjoy life, too. Like, I feel like he's forgotten to do that because he's been such a workaholic. And yeah. I'm concerned because now it's starting to show in his work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so, a fair assessment. Yeah. yeah. I haven't I actually haven't watched Ghost Adventures for probably three seasons or something. Like, I think I saw one episode. I haven't. Mm -hmm. I saw the one episode where he introduces the, the female camera tech, and that was it. That's all I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Have you watched it? No. Not really. Not really. But maybe we should. Maybe no. we should. I'm not, I don't have a lot, of, it's like, it doesn't yeah. feel entertaining anymore. Like, I don't know what it mm. is. Like, I, I don't know if it's him as an EP or if it's him as a host. It doesn't feel, um, I'm empathing him, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm empathing that he is just not uh, as um, motivated by it anymore. Yeah. 
and um, he just doesn't seem it like if you compare like last night's episode to like season one it's like virtually like and I know over time it has to show or, like you know it has to change and evolve like you have to and like obviously he's gotten better cinematographers and like filming but mm -hmm. it's just, his personality is just doesn't seem as invested as it used to be and yeah. I mean dude he's been doing it for 25 seasons like yeah that's a long time I would be tired, too. It's time At this to point, I think he's just that. riding it out for the check. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's so, kind of what it seems like. Yeah. Unfortunately. but. So, yeah. Let me see if there's any questions or anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a filler episode. I don't know if it was or not. Like I said, I haven't been watching. I haven't, I haven't been watching. So, Someone yeah. said the whole season's been mess so far. Someone also said, I, I feel like he's getting tired of the show. Someone said, I think he's tired. What else can he do now? Live life. Yeah. You know, he's succeeded. Like, that is success. That is ultimate success as an executive producer. He could transfer to. over to being other executive producers of other shows. He could transfer over to becoming a director of movies and films um, and yeah. just sit in a chair all day. Like, he deserves to have that sort of retirement and, like, make more money. Um, it's not like he has nothing to do. He has the museum, too. But, like, yeah, he. I just think that... Um, it, it's gone on long enough and I think that it's starting to sh and this isn't like me judging it this is just me analyzing his attitude through the show yeah and he just doesn't seem like he's enjoying it anymore he seems like he, it's kind of like you know how like you have a job and you've had a job for like 10 years and like yeah. it pays really well so you're just going to keep going back to work even though you're not happy and like you have enough money to retire early but like what am I going to do with my time if I retire? That's how it feels. It's just like, well, might as well just keep going. Yeah. Um, someone said I'm tired of him saying everything's demonic. Yeah, yeah I think I got oh. tired of that a little bit, too. Um, plenty in the Midwest. Focus on the museum. Yeah, I don't know. You know, to each his own. Like, whatever he does, oh. good luck in, in his endeavors and his future, you know? He has definitely... <laughs> You can't talk shit though, because he's definitely had success. You can't, you can't despite that. You know what I mean? And Not at all. And his personal life is nobody's effing business. Yeah. My personal life is nobody's effing business. Like people want to get up in his grill about like he doesn't post pictures of him and his girlfriend. Who cares? You yeah. know what? Do you know what it's like having millions of people follow you? Like Jesus. You know the controversy that goes along with that. Do you know what that does to your mental health? When people are judging every move you make, every time you fart, someone has something to say about it. Like, unless you've been there, you don't really have a, a way to say anything about it. So that's my opinion on it. I will absolutely yeah. back him up on that, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it. Wow. Well. I feel like today's stream, like, flew. It did. It did. I'm ready for a nap. Yeah. Next week, uh, Elfie and I are doing Jack the Ripper. Yes, it's, really it's going to be good. And that's the tea. I don't have anything else to say. That's it. Yeah. And life is going. Good. Pick up and nice go on. Nice to be back. It is. Yeah. yeah. Nice to be back. And we should be back on like a normal streaming routine, um, hopefully for the at least the next like six to eight weeks, hopefully. And um, then who knows what's going to happen after that because I have some things that are on my schedule. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. As my eye is twitching. Um, but yeah, <laughs> life is good. Cheers. Ghost Girl Diaries kicked ass. We got a freaking film Cheers. award. A few film awards. Woo! My hard Doing work paid thing. off. We are here. We did it. Um, life is freaking good. And um, to anyone out there wanting to follow their dreams, freaking do it. Stop making excuses turn off you know listening to everybody around you turn off listening to the haters stay in your own lane worry about yourself and get it done period 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 and i love it. it and that's the tea that's the wine and <laughs> that's the wine that's oh my gosh wine. thank you guys so much for being well. here make sure you're following us on social media hopefully i'll be back on social media soon um, I'm hoping next week I'll be able to get back to normal. Kat and I are going to do um, lives on Instagram, so just make sure you're following us on Instagram for when that happens. Doing this will fun. be uploaded as a podcast as normal. I'll probably have to edit it now that I uh, was on mute for like the first five minutes. It's fine. And uh, as always, make sure you subscribe to our podcast. It's everywhere. We have a five-star review rating thanks to you guys. We heart your face. We love you guys. 
Any ideas or content that you want us to talk about, leave us comments on um, the YouTube channel tomorrow when this is uploaded. Cheers to the future of Ghost Girl Diaries. We love you guys. Remember, when I'm quiet, that means I'm working. And this time, your girl is a hustler, and I did the thing. You know what I'm saying? Doing the thing. Actively. Have a good weekend, guys. Good night. Stay spooky. Bye, Bye guys. Back from the dead.